Hey y'all, it's Nathan here. In this video, I'm going to be talking you through knowledge graphs and graph neural networks. Let's get into it. So graphs are just a collection of nodes and edges. So visually what that looks like is here we have a set of nodes, which are the purple circles and edges, which are the green and red lines. Um, and so the edges represent relationships between these nodes. So here we have that there is some sort of connection between these two nodes represented by a green edge. And so you can have different types of edges as well as representing different relationships. So if this was a, say a social network, perhaps the green represented, uh, uh, a friendship relationship, so the nodes would represent people, and maybe the uh, red relationship represented enemies or something like that. And so the difference between like a regular graph and an knowledge graph really is there is no difference. It mostly comes down to the domain that they're being used in and for what they're being used for. So graphs are going to be usually done for things like doing searches within graphs. So something like a breadth first search or a depth first search. Um, say if you're doing, uh, trying to route network packets from one router to another, uh, you'd probably just call that a graph rather than a knowledge graph. But if you're doing something like a social network, then you would consider uh, the nodes as people, the edges as relationships. And so you would consider that a knowledge graph. You also might encounter the nodes being called entities or vertices are all the same thing or edges be, being called edges or um, relationships etc they're all just uh, the same thing and also you might even see notation uh, in like a paper or something where you have g is equal to uh, v of uh, e so this g is just the graph um, this v represents in in uh, this case, the nodes or vertices, and the E represents the edges. So when it comes to knowledge graphs, the important thing that people care about is this idea of um, knowledge triplets. So knowledge triplets um, have three components. They have the head, the tail, and then some relationship. That connects the two. And that's what makes up the knowledge triplet. The reason for using knowledge triplet is it's just an easier way of describing a knowledge graph. Um, and so instead of having it um, in a uh, visual state, you can have these knowledge triplets that represent uh, the connections. Um, and so you can easily store this information. Um, some useful uses for uh, knowledge graphs and knowledge triplets are known as are, are as, um, something like knowledge completion. So say that we have this um, this uh, graph over here, and we have some relationships and nodes already mapped out so, and that we know about. Um, but most likely, uh, this knowledge graph is incomplete. There are missing relationships. So the idea of knowledge completion is to take the relationships that already exist and try and predict new relationships, new knowledge triplets that exist within the graph. So for example, you could, as you can see, this person and this person are uh, represented by the green relationship. So let's just call that uh, that they're friends. And also, these two people are also um, friends in this social network. And so 
uh, one uh, knowledge completion that we could try and do is uh, say that this person and this person are friends. And so this is how you get recommender systems for social networks such as Twitter uh, recommending who to follow or Facebook recommending who might be uh, your friend, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So graphical neural networks attempt to leverage the uh, hierarchical structure of uh, graphs and knowledge graphs to learn something about the graph. Um, one general use case for this is something where you learn a vector representation of each of the nodes. So here I have um, different um, nodes and the graph in each are being represented by this uh, vector representation. And so you can use a graphical neural network to uh, learn the semantics, the structure, um, behind the actual graph itself in order to perform some tasks. Some tasks for uh, graph neural networks um, include uh, things like link prediction. Um, so this is something like, you know, knowledge completion uh, that I talked about previously, um, as well as uh, graph classification. So you can think of uh, modeling a uh, chemistry uh, element or a chemistry um, molecule as a graph and trying to predict the properties of that graph such as is it toxic or does it have some uh, medical um, uh, medical uses. Some example types of uh, graph neural networks one of the sort of simplest to um, to understand is node to vec. So this is um, uh, node to vec uh, works at the node level. And so it's essentially tries to learn a uh, good representation for these vector uh, vectors that go onto the node. And essentially what its job is, is to do a clustering. So these uh, node vectors are going to essentially be similar to other uh, nodes that have um, similar structures. What do I mean by that? So, for example, let's go back to the social network that we had here. So, this person here, they have three friends. They have a very similar structure to um, uh, in terms of other uh, nodes and stuff as potentially this person. Since they are, are both friends, uh, they also have a, a similar mutual friend as well. Um, and so uh, one way that you might want to represent um, these people uh, is to have a vector representation. And since they are relatively similar in terms of their social network, uh, like group of friends, uh, you would want that vector representation to be similar to each other. So the way that node to vec works is that it generates random walks. So that's what this is. It's a random walk over the graph where you start at, say, some node, say, this particular node, and you visit one of its neighbors and add that to a walk list. So it's a list of nodes that you've, <clears throat> it's a list of nodes that you visited um, starting at one particular node. So say that we start here and then we go here and then we go there and maybe here. And so after that we have a series of nodes that we visited. So uh, here is some of the nodes that we visited uh, and their vector representations. And what we try and do is we want to make all these vectors similar to each other. And so we use a neural network to uh, perform this. So um, 
in the original node to it was just a very simple one layer embedding lookup table essentially. Um, and so you would want the vector here to be similar to all of these. Now, uh, in order for the neural network not to just make every single vector, regardless of where it is in this graph, the same, uh, so that it, it basically, you know, uh, it gets perfect, uh, perfect loss. Um, what you do is you also mix in some random nodes that you just randomly pick from the graph. And what you want is for these vector representations to be very, very uh, distant from each other. So very dissimilar. And that way you uh, don't have the model just instantly make all of the vectors in the graph the same. Another type of uh, graph neural network is the spatial convolutional uh, network. And this is a generalization of convolutional neural networks that are used in images. And so they are just applied to uh, these uh, graphs here. So here I have an example, again, of another graph. And essentially what this is doing is it's going to um, um, apply a convolutional filter across the graph. So say that it applies a convolutional filter on this. And what the um, spatial convolutional network will do is it will aggregate all of these um, all of these uh, vectors into a new vector, which will take the place of the previous um, vector. So you have some starting point. So just like in the Mitovec, we start here. We define the convolution um, filter and apply it to uh, the, a local area. So locality is just based on uh, neighborhood. And um, we then do some sort of aggregation. The most simplest is just to um, sum all of these together and take their average. And uh, this will give us a new vector. So this process gives us a new vector, which will take the place of the old vector. And so what this uh, does is it, uh, after, uh, if you imagine doing this multiple times, the first, um, the first uh, pass through the neural network, this node learns about all of its neighbor's nodes information. So it aggregates this information, this information, etc. Uh, and this is done for all the nodes. So also this particular uh, node aggregates its neighbor. So it aggregates here and here. And so that happens, all the updates happen. And so each uh, node learns about its neighbors. And on the second um, pass, um, this neural network pulls in again its information from its neighbors, but that information has already been updated by its neighbors' neighbors. So it's actually now learning about information that's two neighbors away. And so um, you can use this to gain very uh, information from really far away. And this process is known as message passing. And it's very common in these spatial convolutional uh, networks, which are different from the node to vec. If you want to learn more about knowledge graphs, graph neural networks, and all that type of jazz, check out the playlist that I created that has some amazing videos from amazing uh, people explaining more in depth each of these. Also in the description, I have a couple of resources that I also used for uh, learning about knowledge graphs and graph neural networks, as well as some libraries and tutorials that you can use to get some hands-on experience with uh, knowledge graphs and graph neural networks. I'll see you in the next one.